one. My dear celebrating community, welcome to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Please take a moment to turn off or silence your cell phones as we prepare ourselves for the sacred liturgy. The second collection today is for the Development and Building Fund. Thank you for your continued generosity and support. If you are visiting us for the first time here at St. Joseph Waipahu, please wave and stand and remain standing so we can properly welcome you. Welcome to our new friends and thank you for joining us. Let us kindly welcome our visitors with warm round of applause. Everyone, please stand. And now kindly greet your seatmates with a friendly smile and say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let us now recite the Eucharistic Revival Prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us your flesh and blood for the life of the world, and you desire that all people come to the supper of the sacrifice of the Lamb. Renew in your church the truth, beauty, and goodness contained in the most blessed Eucharist. Jesus, living in the Eucharist, Come and live in me. Jesus, healing in the Eucharist, come and heal me. Jesus, sacrificing yourself in the Eucharist, come and suffer in me. Jesus, rising in the Eucharist, come and rise to new life in me. Jesus, loving in the Eucharist, come and love in me. Lord Jesus Christ, through the Paschal mystery of your death and resurrection, made present in every Holy Mass. Pour out your healing love on your church and on our world. Grant that as we lift you up during this time of Eucharistic revival, your Holy Spirit may draw all people to join us at this banquet of life. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Our Lady of Peace, Mother of the Eucharist. Pray for us. Today, we celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We offer all prayer requests in our Book of Intentions. Our Mass celebrant this morning is Reverend Father Adondi Arellano, M.S., assisted by Deacon Kit Kalang, M.A., let us join in singing our gathering song. O nations, clap your hands. Shout unto God with a voice of joy.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. through the grace of adoption, chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shimon, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her. His servant Gehazi Gezari- Ge- answered, Yes, she has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, Call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, 
Elisha promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
brought you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory is to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, sisters and brothers. Good morning, Father. Hanging above our water dispenser is a quotation that says, Love is the best powerful force in the world. Love is the best powerful force in the world. And when I was reflecting on this, I told to myself, I think this is the message of the gospel to each and every one of us today. Because God is love. That quotation says, God is the most powerful, not force, but the person in the world. My sisters and brothers, truly, love is the most powerful force. Because if we are in love, we can do everything. We can sacrifice everything. If we are in love, we can love more. Now, even those who are unlovable. Now, if we are in love, we can forgive more. If we are in love, we can accept even those unacceptable people. If we are in love... We can do a lot of extraordinary things in this world if we are in love. If you are in love, even though your husband is smelly already, you will still love him. <laughs> if you are in love, even though your wife has a lot of wrinkles, white hair, you can still love her. Even though your children, they are hard-headed, they don't listen, they disobey, but if you love them, or if you really love them, you will continue to love your children, and you can all continue to take good care of them. Truly, my sisters and brothers, love is the most powerful force in the world. I ask you now, my sisters and brothers, what leads you to church today? Why are you here? Why are you here? Is it because you are in love? I hope so, because you love God. That's why you are here today. But I'm very much sure people, there's a lot of people here who are here today who are not in love. But they just to show to their brothers and sisters that they are holier than them. I know that you, some of you are here today because you don't have anything to do with Sunday. No worries. I know that you are, some of you are here today because you don't have nothing to do. I know that some of you are here today because you want to pray for something. But that does not mean that you really love the Lord. There are a lot of us who are here today who are not in love. But just showing that, hey, I have to eat Sunday. I have to go to the church. But not truly in love. My sisters and brothers, our Lord Jesus Christ is inviting us today to love Him first. Why? Because if we put or we, we love Him first, it is very 
possible for us, like what I have said, to love our imperfect brothers and sisters. It is very possible for us to love the unlovable. It is very easy for us or possible for us to forgive the unforgivable people in the world if we put first our love in God. And we can do a lot of good things if we are in love to Him as our loving Father. And this is the reminder of Jesus to His disciples in our Gospel today. No? If you love your parents more than me, no? if you love your brothers and sisters more than me, He said, you will you 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 will you 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 don't have a perfect love you are not actually loving me he said today my sisters and brothers this is a the question that we need to ask ourselves are we really in love do we really love god if we love god then we have to do two things if we really love god one is to transform ourselves to be a better person if you really love God, we will change ourselves from bad to good. That's why every time we receive communion, every time we come to Mass and receive communion, that communion should make us a better person, better than yesterday. Our life, our relationship with God and our relationship with other people should be improving every time we receive communion. Because a loving person who loves God will follow the will of the Father. And one will of the Father is to make us a better person. Are you a better person more than yesterday? Or you, are you getting worse? <laughs> Some of us are getting worse, isn't it? They come to church, but they don't do anything. They don't care. They gossip every day. They destroy their, their neighbors every day. They don't forgive. They don't help. They just don't care. That's what most of us are doing. We don't care. Ask yourself, my sisters and brothers, you might be wasting your time coming to church. Are you improving? And are you making yourself a better person more than yesterday? Because that is the sign of a loving person. A loving person will always do the will of the Father. What is the reason why we need to do the will of the Father? Our second reading is very beautiful because we are baptized and as baptized people, we die with Christ but through baptism also, we, we live with Christ. We die from, from our sins but we resurrected with a new life. And that is, my sisters and brothers, the reason why we are coming to church every day to renew ourselves. We die to sin, but we resurrected with our Lord Jesus Christ. We become a new person after our celebration of the Mass. We become a new person. We become better more than yesterday. Second, my sisters and brothers, a loving person will not only change his life and make his life or her life a better, a better person, but a loving person who really loves God will extend that love to his or her brothers and sisters. We become now the extension of God. We become now the extension of love of God to our brothers and sisters. Look what happened in our first reading today from the second book of Kings. We heard the story of Elisha, who was a very holy man. And as a holy man, he was welcomed by holy couples. They were, they, 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 this couple welcomed Elisha. They extended the love that they received from God by accepting, welcome Elisha in their home. They did not only welcome Elisha in their home, they make Elisha part of their home. That's why they built a room for him, a bed for him, food for him, a chair, a table for him. They make Elisha part of their family. They become a welcoming people. They become the, the, the bearer of God's love to their brothers and sisters. And that is also the, the, the effect of love to, to each and every one of us, my sisters and brothers. 
If we feel that we are loved by God, we need to extend that love by loving our brothers and sisters. That's why we need to be welcoming. No? What, is the, what, is, what is to be a welcoming person? Not only to open our, our doors for other people, but to open also our hearts, ourselves, to those who are in need. No? And one window or door of a grateful heart, a loving heart, is our smile. No? Some of you are not smiling. I think you are not in love. You are not happy that, 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 that God is with you today. You are not happy that you are in love. Isn't it that if you are in love, you, be, you, 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 you will always be happy. Even though there's a lot of problems and difficulties in life, if you are in love, you will still find to, to, to show your happiness inside you. To show goodness inside you. And this is the message, I think, of our first reading to each and every one of us today. That if you are in love, you will extend that love to your brothers and sisters by doing good deeds. Why do we need to extend our love to our brothers and sisters? Because those who are extending their love to their brothers and sisters will be rewarded. Those who put God first in their life will be rewarded. Look at the reward of the couples, of the couple in our first reading today. When they extend their love to Elisha, what happened? Elisha blessed them. No? Bless them with child. Bless them with new life. Bless them with uh, uh, a loving child. No? And our Lord Jesus Christ also tells us in our gospel today that those who will give the little ones who cold water will also be rewarded. Meaning, my sisters and brothers, if we love God and open ourselves to transformation and open ourselves to our brothers and sisters by accepting them, God will not abandon us, but God will give us a reward. And what is that reward? I'm very much sure that that, that reward is a life in heaven, life eternal. So my sisters and brothers, this is the challenge of our celebration today on this 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Yes, it is easy to love, but to express that love is very hard. We need to put God first in order for us to be able to love you know, those who are impossible to love, to do things no, the things that are impossible to do if we put God first in our life. So in this Mass, my sisters and brothers, we pray that God give us the ability to love Him first so that we may be able to extend that love to our brothers and sisters. Because those who love, like God love, will be rewarded in heaven. And that reward is great. Because that reward is a life eternal with God. Amen. Amen. And let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, as we strive for holiness by following God's commandments, we turn to Him with our prayers. For the Church, may God strengthen her holy mission to bear abundant fruit in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For peace throughout the world, may the saving grace of Jesus Christ permeate every heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle in carrying the cross, may the spirit of consolation give them strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here and are called to be hospitable to those around us, may the Lord help us to be better stewards of our blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To all who have died in a light of faith, may our merciful Father welcome them into his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also remember today the reposed soul of Romeo Dudulao. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son showed us the way to you, exemplifying sacrifice in his life and in his death. Hear our petitions that we bring you this day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours. He humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we in this As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have preached throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only see the word and my soul shall be there. And may this body of Christ give me safe to turn on.
go to our brothers and sisters who because of infirmity cannot be with us today. Share to them this Eucharistic body of the Lord and assure them that we are here, the Eucharistic people of God, praying and waiting for them. Go in peace. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the diocese and prayer for vocations all together. Heavenly Father, your divine Son taught us to pray to the Lord of the harvest, to send laborers into his vineyard. We earnestly beg you to bless our diocese in our world with many priests, deacons, and religious who will love you fervently and gladly and courageously spend their lives in service to your son's church, especially the poor and the needy. Bless our lives and our children and to wish from our hopes those whom you desire for this holy work, teach them to respond generously, and keep them ever faithful in following your Son, Jesus Christ, that under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and with the inspiration of St. Damien and St. Mary Ann, the good of redemption may be brought to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. The second collection today is for the Development and Building Fund. Thank you for your kind generosity and support. Ushers, please proceed. this coming Saturday, July 8, at the 6 p.m. Vigil Mass for Father Eric's installation as pastor of our church, presided by Bishop Larry Silva. Festivities will continue after Mass with dinner and fellowship. Bring your favorite dish to share. The church office and church property will be closed this Monday and Tuesday, July 3rd and 4th, in observance of Independence Day holiday. You may still join us for morning Mass at 6.30 a.m. on both days. Thank you everyone and see you on Saturday, July 8th at 6 p.m. for Father Eric's Pastor Installation with Bishop Larry. Thank you. And I would like also to take this opportunity to recognize and acknowledge those who serve in this Mass. Deacon Keith, thank you for joining us today to our choir. Thank you so much, Mary and Justin. Thank you. To uh, Sam, Max, and Dave, thank you for controlling our audiovisual. To our lectors and commentators, to our ushers and usherettes, 
to our extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, to Jillian, to Joseph, to uh, Ethan, to Caleb, to, to Jillian, to Savannah and uh, Liana. Thank you so much for, uh, for uh, serving today. And of course, to all of you sisters and brothers, thank you so much for coming. And I hope to see you again next week. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.